Hey, good morning everybody. Happy Monday. And uh, here in Seattle, it's a beautiful sunny day. But wanted to come on just really quick as we kind of head into the lunch hour here on the West Coast and just send a word of encouragement. I know right now, all of our thoughts are on tomorrow and the election day coming in, lots going on. So just as your friend, and for those of you who go to Sherline Community Church as your pastor, wanted to come on and just give you a word of encouragement. So I'll try to walk through this really quick and in a very encouraging way. So as you're coming on this morning or this uh, lunch hour, be sure to say hello. So first of all, if you have not voted already, just want to encourage you to vote. You know, we are blessed to live in a country where we can all engage in the democratic process. So uh, be sure to vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, uh, but I encourage you to, to, to just engage with that and wrestle with that. I know it's tough. You know, as a family, we've been talking through it and talking through with friends. And uh, it's a very difficult season. It's tough to know, but it's important that we wrestle with this and that we think this through and we lay open the Bible and, and we invite the Holy Spirit to lead us and to speak to us and uh, direct us on how to vote. So engage with that, wrestle with that. Uh, secondly, I wanna say, uh, let's be sure to pray for our leaders, no matter what political party they represent. Uh, the Bible is clear in 1 Timothy where it says, first of all, I encourage you, I urge that supplications, prayer, intercessions, thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. And then it says, this is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires that all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So we're to pray for our leaders. We're to pray for everybody who's running. Engage in that. That is the will of our Father, so do that. Uh, thirdly, I want to encourage you that uh, that we take on the commandment from Jesus, the great commandment, which, which is why? It's to love our neighbors. We're called to love our neighbors. You know, um, I don't know all the candidates that are running uh, personally. I don't engage with them on a day-to-day -day process, but I know my neighbors. I'm here sitting in my neighborhood during this lunchtime. We know our neighbors, we engage with our neighbors, and we're called to love our neighbors. And that love isn't dependent on whether they agree with us, whether they share our political views or any of that. We are called to love our neighbor, period. Uh, our love for God is shown in how we love our neighbors. Uh, Jesus was very clear on that. Uh, it's how people know that we love God by how we love them. And this encouraged this is this this especially I think includes social media which I'm on right now you know how we love each other how we encourage each other you know we can uh, lay out views we can engage in disagreements in a logical thoughtful and loving ways but we are never called to engage in name-calling or demeaning or uh, coercive manipulative tactics all of that that's that's not the way of a follower of Christ. You know, we are called to engage the way. That's why it says in Ephesians 4, 29, it says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear. So, uh, so vote, pray for your leaders, pray for all of them, that they would all know the Lord and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, uh, but also to love your neighbor. And then uh, uh, welcome. You know, my prayer is that when all of this is over, um, that we have behaved by we, I mean followers of Jesus Christ, those of us who profess to be uh, followers of Jesus, Christians, that we've behaved in such a way that our door is welcoming. You know, a lot of hurt's been done during the season, a lot of damage been done, a lot of divisiveness within families, within communities, so many things. Uh, my prayer is that personally, uh, I have behaved in such a way that when this is over, people feel welcome at my door, at the door of my home, uh, here on social media, to reach out to me, that they feel welcome at, at, at the church that I'm a part of, that I've done nothing in any way that would cause someone to believe that they are not welcome. You know, this is the posture of followers of Christ and the postures of uh, believers and church communities. We need to behave in such a way that we welcome people, that we welcome others, that uh, no matter what they believe, no matter where they come from, that they are welcome. We're all made in the image of God and that they are welcome here, that our door is hoping. You know, a lot of hurting people during this season, both in through politics, through the, uh, through the pandemic that we're in, so many things going on. 
Uh, as followers of Christ, we need to always have that welcoming, open door of posturing going, you are welcome. No matter who you are, what you've done, where you've come from, you are welcome. We're all welcome at the table of Christ. Amen? Amen. That's the process we need to go through. You know, our, our role as believers of Christ, as Christians, is to be instruments of peace and reconciliation to God. You know, Jesus said uh, he opened the Sermon on the Mount and the, and the Beatitudes with blessed are the peacemakers. You know, that's our role. And then he went on to say in Matthew 5 that we're to be salt and light. You know, salt is a preservative. Salt uh, has a healing agent. Light shows the way. And Jesus, he issued a warning in, in there. He said that we are no, that uh, if we lose that taste, if we lose that saltiness, uh, that we're no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. That's not what I want. And that's not what I want for our community, for our friends, for, uh, for those of, of us who follow Jesus. We need to ensure that through this process, we don't lose uh, that taste and see that the Lord is good, that we're welcoming, that we're inviting people in. You know, my union with Christ, uh, my surrender to Jesus Christ means that I willingly lay my life down for Jesus. I lay my life down so that others sin can see Christ. You know, when I, uh, I was praying about this this morning, woke up really early, could, really couldn't sleep last night, just thinking and, and uh, was praying in bed and I just finally just got up and just gave in and just, and just, uh, uh, just started reading and praying and just uh, thinking about all of this and praying for my friends, you know, because I have so many friends out there, you know, on Facebook and, and across the nation and the world that are just on both sides and, um, and are just really hurt through this process. And my prayer in that all of this is that, you know what, when all is said and done, my family, my friends, those who know me, my prayer is that one day when I'm in heaven, eternally with Jesus Christ, that I can look around and I see my neighbors, I see my family, I see my friends, that there's nothing that I did that was a stumbling block to them. There was nothing I did that caused them to not be able to see Christ, that I, I was not a block to that, but that I was an encouragement to that. I mean, I think that's why Paul said in Romans 12, he says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. We worship Jesus. This is true and proper, laying our life down. And then verse two, he says this. He says, look, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and perfect will. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, not conforming to the pattern of the world. But when people look at those of us that are following Jesus, there should be a difference, not because of who I am, but from the fact that people know who I am and they see something in me that they know is not about me, but it's about Jesus shining in and through my life. So be transforming. And finally, finally this morning, I know it's, it, uh, there's a lot here, but there's a lot going on. But finally, here's what I want to say. Don't fear. Fear not. We are not given over to fear. We are not people of fear. We are people of faith. We feed our faith, not our fear. That's why throughout Scripture, uh, through the Old Testament and New Testament, those who know God, those who are following Jesus, they continually have this outlook and this mindset of, I will not be given over to fear. Joshua 1.9 says, be strong and courageous. Don't be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord is with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's getting me today. Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And in Psalm 42, you know, the, the psalmist writes this. I love this. Why, so, why, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? The psalmist is speaking to himself. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil? And then he says to himself, Put your hope in God. Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. We are not people of fear. When we fix our eyes on the things that are around us and when we take our direction from things besides Jesus, we're going to be filled with fear. Hope is going to be gone. But when we lift our eyes to Jesus, that's when hope comes inside of us. So as we walk through this again, if you haven't voted, get out and vote. Pray for your leaders. Love your neighbors, all of your neighbors. And let's live in a way that we are welcoming so that when, when Tuesday is here and gone in that process, that our life is one that is welcoming. That all of my friends, Republicans, uh, Democrats, 
everybody, um, all the other parties that are out there, that they feel welcome in my life. They know that I love them and that I am with them and uh, that we can walk together and, and sort this out. And do not be fear. In this, in this season. Be salt and light. Allow the spirit of the living God to transform you and rise up with you. So my friends, be strong and courageous. All of you that are watching today and hearing this today, uh, know that I love you. Whoever you vote for, I love you. And uh, as we walk through this, if you're hurt or you're broken, we love you. Shoreline Community Church uh, is a place that uh, we welcome you as we walk through this together. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's be active in our community. Um, and let's love those, love those around us today. As we love others, people will see God. So church community, again, love you. Uh, thank you for spending this time with me uh, uh, this morning. So uh, go vote if you haven't voted and then get out and go for a wonderful walk in the sunshine. So I love you all, praying with you, and I'm here for you. So love you all. God bless.